G'day folks and welcome to another tutorial. Back to assembly, thank goodness. Okay, so today we're going to be um, having a look at the assembly version, or we're going to be planning the assembly version of our adjust brightness algorithm. But first, there's a couple of things that I want to go through. And uh, this first one is just a, just a convention. And it's, it's all about which registers we should save whenever we... Uh, make an assembly function. So this is not actually assembly, this is just programmers have decided this to try and make things easier. But um, if you're going to be using registers in a particular procedure, um, there's a custom to, um, or between the caller and the callee of the procedure, as to which registers are scratch, or in other words changeable, and which registers should be the same by the time you return. So the scratch registers are RAX, RCX, RDX, um, R8 through to R11. Then the floating point registers are all scratch, so that's uh, ST0 through to ST7. We haven't looked at floating point, but we'll do that some other time. Um, the SSE registers, XMMO through to XMM5 and YMMO these are alias to the uh, XMM so this is not much different YMM5 um, YMM6H to YMM15H ok so that's the high 128 bits of these um, YMM registers Anyway, what we're going to be using today is these ones, so all that it comes down to really is if you're going to change something other than these uh, general purpose registers here, um, you should push and pop them from the stack. But um, let's have a look at what we should save. So RBX, the easiest thing to do is just not to use these ones. Uh, RSI, RDI, uh, RBP, base pointer. R12 through to R15 and XMM6 through to XMM15. Okay, so the um, the custom is that if we use RBX in our algorithm, then at the very top we should do push, oops, RBX, and then just before we return we should say pop RBX and then ret. That way, um, nothing we do in our algorithm uh, changes the value of RBX, so that um, the caller knows that RBX is going to stay the same. Uh, it is just a convention, and I want to say that if you can get a big speed up by um, throwing the convention out the window, go for it, my friends. Just uh, know what you're doing and uh, document these things, and you know we can do whatever we want in assembly. Okay, so that's a little bit about scratch registers and registers to save. Oh, this also explains why I use particular registers in the following algorithm. So, yeah, let's have a look. Alrighty, so um, adjust brightness in assembly. What we're going to have is um, RCX will equal BMP data dot scan zero. So that's the pointer to the um, front image that we can see. Our DX, these are going to be the parameters that we're passing. Our DX is going to be a pointer to original image. Actually, I think I might have called it BMP original. So let's just BMP original. Um, we're going to have um, R8W which is the value that we're adding uh, to the brightness and then the other parameter, this is going to take four parameters, this function is going to be R9D uh, this is an integer and this is going to be the image size in bytes so the assembly version is going to take a few extra parameters than the C++ version since the C++ version already knew some of these things like image size in bytes and uh, value to add, I think it knew that as well. 
Anyway, what we're basically going to have is uh, an array. Ooh, that's a bit wonky. Array over here, which is um, oops, RCX, and an array over here, which is pointed to by RDX, and we're going to grab a value from this. No, we're not. We're going to grab a value from here, and we're going to add R8W to it. So let's just see. We'll grab a byte from so it's RDX star then we'll add R8W to it um, check if it overflowed okay so this is quite important if it overflows then we want to stick um, 255 instead of whatever the sum was and if it underflowed we want to stick uh, 0 instead of what the uh, subtraction answer was but um, once we've checked if it overflowed and adjusted it maybe adjust for overflow I'll put um, store in RCX star and then go on to next and yeah that's the bottom of the loop so we'll grab this value we'll pop it into uh, AL um, we'll add R8W to it and we'll put it over here then we'll move up to here we'll pop this value into AL we'll add R8W to it and we'll put it over here does that make sense? so that's basically uh, the outline of what we're going to do if we go over the page, I want to show you some uh, a few details here. I've worked on this algorithm for a little while now. I've had a good think about a few ways to do this, and uh, I think we've come up with a, a pretty quick way to do this. So in the C++ version, we had um, for i equals 0 to dot dot dot, whatever it was, and at every iteration through the loop, we were checking um, if... if overflow and then we were checking else if underflow and then we just had an else down here so 255 0 else just plus them together um, this is this is really really slow what we can do is um, check at the very top we can say are we subtracting or are we adding a value to the brightness here and then have two labels, so one for addition, or two loops, sorry, the addition loop, and one for subtraction. Down here, that way we don't have to perform two checks per loop cycle, we only have to perform one check. So down here in the subtraction loop, um, we check for underflow, which is um, checking if the value is less than zero, and up here in the addition loop we check for overflow. Okay, so that'll make things much, much quicker. And the other thing that I want to add is that, um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but CMOV, big bad CMOV, the conditional moves, are much, much faster than jumps. So we could do something like, um, say, add maybe AX, and what was the, uh, where do we have the, uh, I think it was R8, R8W and we could say J on C, jump if there was a carry to you know blah 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 uh, otherwise move the answer into RCX Oops, into RCX and down here where we've got blah 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 we could um, say maybe MOV um, was it 255 into RCX um, but this jump just here is going to slow us down so we don't want to do this instead we want to use a conditional move we want to add these two together then conditionally move 255 into um, AL if there was an overflow or if the carry was used so we're using carry here for the overflow um, but there's a few little complications here let's go over to the next page alrighty number one is um, CMOV does not work with 
bytes. Okay, and the other one is probably CMOV does not work with immediate. So what we're going to do at the top of our um, addition loop, we're going to set a register to be um, 255. We'll say um, MOV R11W um, 0 FFFF. Yep, just like that. And uh, at the top of our subtraction loop, we'll move um, 0 into RLW with uh, MOV RLW 0. And that way, when we say um, add AL What is what was the value in? I keep forgetting. I think it's um, R8B. Yeah, we can say C mov C um, AX. Notice that it's AX because uh, C mov does not work with bytes. And R L W. This way, if there's a carry, we move. Um, what's that? It's going to be uh, 65,000 or something into AX. But um, thankfully, that will also result in uh, AL equals 255. We're just ignoring the top 16, uh, top 8 bits of AX here. But um, the bottom AL is going to be set to 255 anyway, so we can still use a, a conditional move. Okay, and the other thing that I want to do is uh, maybe we should go back to our. Where do we have the. Okay, right here. Um, when we're stepping through the array here, um, I'm going to keep RCX pointing to the zeroth element, and I'm going to keep RDX pointing to the zeroth element. And instead, um, I think we'll use R10 as an offset. So each loop through the array, uh, RCX and RDX are going to stay still, but we're going to ink R10. So we'll use one of those um, fancy addressing modes. We'll use um, register plus register so that we jump through both of the arrays at the same time since they'll both be using the R10 offset. And uh, yeah, that should make things a little bit quicker again. Okay, so there's, there's plenty of ways that we could do this. Um, if you wanted to have a go at using um, jumps just to see the speed difference between jumps and uh, conditional moves, I think that would be really educational and you'd probably uh, have a fair bit of fun with uh, just seeing how quick conditional moves are. But uh, yeah, this is the way that I'm going to do it. And uh, it should be good. I hope it goes quicker than C++. Alrighty, well, uh, thanks for listening.